Good evening, everyone. I'm the Devious Diva, and with me is my special guest and fiance, John. How are you tonight? How are we doing, guys? <laughs> so this is my special Valentine edition. I thought it would be fun for the holiday to do my favorite romantic comedy horror film, and that is 1998's Bride of Chucky. So we're going to discuss that for a little bit, and then we're going to have a little discussion about... Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, or as I like to say, Jason, Michael, one and the same. But first we'll talk a little bit about Bride of Chucky. So I just wanted to start off by saying that the reason that this is my favorite movie, well second favorite because I do like Child's Play first, but I like this movie because I feel that in the late 90s after Child's Play 3, which I thought bombed completely, it was terrible having uh, young Andy Barclay at a military school. There was nothing funny about it. To me, it was an awful plot line, having a new kid that Chucky was going to pursue, but that's here nor there. But I think that this movie showed a really fun, campy side of horror, and I think that Jennifer Tilly was a perfect choice for this trailer trash Tiffany with the bleach blonde hair, the tacky roots, kind of like me. It's awesome. And uh, I think she just really did a great job at showing you that she was a great counterpart to Brad Dorff's Chucky or Charles Lee Ray, the uh, Lakeshore Strangler. So I'm just going to ask John some questions that we're going to go over. And then I just want to get to a discussion that was kind of big on Twitter when I made a statement um, about the whole Jason thing. I can't get it off my mind. But we'll talk about that in a second. So as far as Bride of Chucky... Um, would you rank that as a favorite in the franchise? Uh, or wh where does that lie for you as far as the franchise in general? I'd say it was one of the better ones. It was definitely better than most of the others. I thought it was amusing, entertaining. You know, it, it had some romantic comedy in it, but it was somewhat, of, you know, as, as a goofy kind of horror film. It absolutely so. was. Um, so I think most of you know the plot line, but if you don't, basically it's been 10 years um, since uh, Chucky has been now dormant, and Tiffany does apprehend the doll and is able to breathe life back into him with that same chant. And uh, what ends up happening is, you know, she's happy to see him and be with him, and he completely rejects her. She wants to get married, have a child. He laughs that off. He wants none of it. So she locks him up in a cage that he's going to get out of, and he gets her back. He gets a doll, and he's going to kill her, which is a great murder scene where he electrocutes her in the bathtub. That was a funny scene. And he puts her into the doll, and uh, now she's stuck the same as him. And the whole movie is them trying to get into human bodies again. Um, they find a young couple, and one of them is um, the actress, young Katherine Heigl. Um, and also another appearance that I do like in this movie is John Ritter, um, who's famous for so many things, but uh, obviously the first thing I know him from is Three's Company. And uh, I think he's really great as this malevolent police chief because he's actually goofy, fun-hearted, nice guy, and he, he plays such a prick in it. It was a great part. Um, I personally also liked um, having Alexis Arquette in it. She is one of the pioneers um, for the transgender community. I think she is immensely talented. Um, I thought she did great. She has a very small appearance in it as Tiffany's lover um, that she kind of has around just for boredom and to make Chucky jealous, and there's a great murder scene with that. And actually my intro, which is Living Dead Girl, the Rob Zombie song um, that is in the beginning and was for that soundtrack, that's what I use for my intro, and I think that it's very fitting. And um, some of my look, I don't want to say all of it, but some of that look does come a little bit from the Tiffany Valentine um, look in general. Um, but I, I feel that it's a great romantic comedy. I think that it does have a side that's sweet where Chucky is in love with Tiffany and actually wants to marry her. I think that it has a lot of comedic scenes um, for me, and I think you like it too when they were fighting. Like, they're now in their doll form and she's baking for them. Yeah, they're going back and <laughs> forth, yeah. And... <laughs> She makes the cookies and, uh, you know, she tosses the cookies at him that are hard as a rock. And he's like, by the way, where'd you learn to bake? I thought that was a pretty funny moment. So it, it's just one of those, it's it's great uh, campy horror. It's a lot of back and forth. It's a great, um, I just think, like, I'm not really a romantic person. So if you can fuse a little bit of horror, some comedy, and a little bit of love in there, I think it's great. I think it was just a good idea to have Chucky have a counterpart, have his own bride, somebody who's just as... As, um, evil as him who's obsessed with killing people and torture and kind of like just as tacky 
and uh, somebody who's just very below the belt. I thought she was a very well-rounded character. Jennifer Tilly's great. Um, I love doing impressions of her. I'm not that good at it, but I love to do it. Oh, Chucky, she's beautiful. I try. Um, but anyway, so that's just um, a brief overview. I think it's something that you should check out. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it, but aside from Child's Play, which I'd love to do an actual full extensive review on, uh, this was just a brief overview to say for Valentine's Day, if you want to watch something with your significant other, I think that's a good one to check out. Great soundtrack, um, good storyline, I think, in, in the franchise. I think that they really needed something revamped, and I think that was it. And we also do follow the Chucky series to some extent for some of you out there that currently watch that, and they are going to have a season two, um, which will be uh, streaming on Peacock. I'm not sure when, but I'm excited, and I will definitely bring you news on that when I hear about it. Um, but I wanted to just do a segue discussion of uh, a conversation brought up on Twitter, and that was me stating, and I said this is just my own opinion, that I think Jason Voorhees, the villain in Friday the 13th, is no different than Michael Myers of Halloween. While I can say yes, the Halloween movie is what I like better, is there's better writing, better storyline. I think the characters surrounding Michael Myers are good. I think that yes, he, he has that purpose of going after his sister. He does want to kill his family. Um, but as far as Jason goes, I feel that the killings are very random. I don't think there's rhyme or reason as the movies go on. It's not as if he's just going after counselors at Crystal Lake, which I know in the first one, his mother is seeking revenge because, you know, the counselors when he was young let him drown. And that's something that she has a hang up on, as we know, Pamela Voorhees was the uh, first killer in the original. But my thoughts are just that I think they're one and the same. And I'm just throwing this to John, who I think explains it very well, like, in your opinion, because we talk about this and people are kind of, you know, defensive and I understand and I respect your opinions, but what are your thoughts? Like, they're one and the same to you, right? I mean, you're, I introduced you to Friday the 13th more recently, so what, what are your thoughts on this? To me, they are one and the same. They, they both wear a mask. Mm -hmm. They both go around killing people. They both have truly no purpose. Absolutely. That's pretty much as simple as it gets as far as I'm concerned. It, to me, it's it's no different than any other serial killer you see out in the news. The only difference is, is it's a horror movie. It's not real. If anything, the serial killers are what is truly horrifying, whereas these people, they, they have no rhyme or reason. Absolutely. They just wear a mask. Yep. They're ugly underneath <laughs> for, for whatever reasons. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and that's that's truly it. There's really nothing there. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, they're just... There just isn't anything there. To me, they're honestly boring. If I wanted to, you know, watch that, I'd watch the news. Absolutely, I agree. Um, so the other part of this is that my argument, or not even an argument, but opinion, is that out of the three slasher franchises, which I would consider Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and Halloween, I vocalize that I like Freddy Krueger the best because I think Robert England brought a lot of life to it. He's, uh, he's able to have a personality. He's able to speak. And I also pointed out that I think that it's terrifying that someone can come after you in your dreams. And he certainly, in my opinion, had purpose, at least per the first one, um, because I kind of find all of the um, subs the films that come after that a little bit wonky. So my favorite is Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and um, New Nightmare, which you agree is, is your favorite. Mm -hmm. But to, to make a... a long story short with that, I feel that it's a lot scarier if someone comes to you in your dream and murders you because we all have to sleep sometime. It's very interesting. And if you ever watch something on Wes Craven, um, any kind of documentary about Nightmare on Elm Street, you'll find that this was based on a young boy who was having nightmares and he was harming himself or getting hurt in his dreams. And he ended up dying. They found him dead in his bed. And this propelled Wes Craven to create this story of, uh, you know, a child molester where the parents severely burn him and kill him and he is going to seek vengeance by terrifying these children through fear through their dreams. But uh, to make this back to a point of asking you a question, mm -hmm. someone was stating about Freddy Krueger, um, how do I want to put it because we were just talking about it, as far as the fear thing, mm -hmm. you know, they were saying that Freddy Krueger is not a threat because if you're not afraid of him, then he'll be non-existent, whereas Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees, whether you're afraid or not, they are going to be there. You cannot get rid of them. So could you explain to me why you, you know, feel that that maybe doesn't matter or why Freddy is still better? You have to be able to control yourself in your dreams. Which how is many, difficult. How many people can control themselves in their dreams? 
how many people can sit there and say, yeah, I looked at what was going on in my dream, and I just made the conscious decision to change it. Absolutely. You don't. What happens in your dreams are in your subconscious, and you, 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 can't, really, you can't really stop that. I agree. So, I, I'm someone that dreams, and when I'm afraid, I'm afraid, and I can't control the subconscious. Once I go into that REM state, there's no way of controlling that. But people's argument is that you know the other two are alive and present, even if you don't have fear. So do you still do you think that makes a good argument to them being a better villain in any way, or are they still boring and mundane and kind of one in the same either way? It brings a good point to the argument, but it still doesn't it still doesn't negate the fact that they're just boring killers. <laughs> and, and and you can yeah. watch that on TV. Read, the, pick up the paper. Yeah. Watch it. You know, watch the news. Absolutely. Yeah. You, know, you, you want to see something like that? You want to see something scary? Go take a look at John Wayne Gacy. Go take a look at Ted Bundy. That's scary. <laughs> that, yeah. Whereas these guys, it's a man in a mask, and it's kind of just the same. They walk really fast, and they're stalking you with a knife or hockey stick or whatever it may be. Yep. So. And, and and those. Those true serial killers, mm-hmm. they didn't put a mask on. Yeah. They looked you right in your eye. They looked dead right in your eye. And there's definitely something very sadistic and frightening. That's a lot more terrifying. So I do agree with that. I just figured I'd bring this up because it's something we talk about, particularly with Friday the 13th, because you're getting acquainted with the series. And, you know, it's just everybody has their opinions. We're all passionate about horror. But I just figured I would have a little discussion with John, and he brought up some good points. And I just wanted to say that I do respect all of your opinions. And uh, I just, you know, I feel what I feel. I think Freddy's terrifying. I think that the Halloween series is good. We certainly enjoyed the revamp as far as 2018 Halloween, uh, Halloween Kills, and the upcoming Halloween Ends, for sure. I know that you do like those, though, right? Those are Yeah, the, the newer ones I, I, I enjoy, although... Again, still just a killer in a mask. Mm-hmm. At least better written, a little bit more entertaining. You know, there's, there's more entertainment value in those because otherwise it's no, no different than anywhere you go. Absolutely, I agree. So it's just something I like to bring up. We love talking about horror. We watch horror movies every night, so we live and breathe this stuff. Um, so this was just a short video to kind of just do an overview of uh, Bride of Chucky. It's something that we watch a lot together. We laugh at. I think that, you know, any couple that watches that, it is really lighthearted and fun part of the franchise, and it's worth checking out. Jennifer Tilly gives a really great performance in that. Um, so in circum- back, circumventing back to that, that's really what the video is about. But I wanted to address that because I thought that was just a really good topic as far as killers go. Um, as for tomorrow night, for the first time, I'm a little nervous, of course, but very excited and hyped up that tomorrow, um, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please check out my channel, The Devious Diva, because we will be talking about Stephen King's Christine. And I'm super excited. I'm sure you are, too. Uh, We've never done a live chat, so we hope that you guys can join us. And uh, if not, I hope that you can check it out later. Um, Leave some comments. I'd love to um, answer any of your questions and hear about, you know, your favorite parts of the movie or any Stephen King film film that you like. I'm stuttering on my words tonight. Um, But anyway, I love hearing from you guys. I love all of your comments. I love all of your reviews, um, all of your tweets. I love retweeting things. I love all the memes. It's so much fun being a part of this horror community. And. And um, I look forward to talking to all of you more. And I also wanted to bring up, which I have said in tweets, but we are definitely looking for people. um, If you want to have a guest spot on here, even if that's a platform to uh, promote your channel and some of the things that you might be reviewing, we'd love to have you on. So definitely um, get in in contact with me if you'd like to do that. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a great night. We will see you live tomorrow, 8 p.m., Christine, Eastern Standard Time. And I am the Devious Diva. This is John, and we want to wish you a good night. Bye, guys.